Okay, I'll try to so make this as fast as possible. What you guys can see with all the ladies, there's a lot of information to take in when you are writing a book. Mm -hmm. And all the stuff that we covered here is still not all mm -hmm. that you have to do. So uh, the first thing that I am going to uh, say is research. You'll hear me say that a lot. Research. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to Sally next door say, well, oh, you can't do that. Like, you're not gonna make any money, whatever. Do your research, do what's in your heart, but do your research on every aspect of writing your book. Do your research. Okay, first slide. Yes, sir. And by the way, I'm going to be asking you guys questions. I have some uh, advanced review copies that I send out to book clubs and editors and read whatever. For a book. I'm gonna give these away. I'm gonna ask you guys questions to see if you're listening and give these away. So, you get to participate too? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'll talk about why you need those. So okay. let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm a public speaker, but I am no good at PowerPoint, so bear with me here for a second, okay? So what you will learn today is how to mind your business because it is a business. Now there are some people who may want to do this as a hobby. I could say if you were just doing this as a hobby, you might want to leave now, but I'm not going to say that because it is a business. It's a business because you may think it's a hobby, but Uncle Sam says once you reach a, a sale amount of so much, it is then officially a business. So I want you all to stay here. And going back to minding your business, don't try to compete with Sam, Joe, Jill, whatever. Research and do your own thing. Uh, how to form your business, how to plan your business, how to market your business, and how to keep Uncle Sam happy. Next slide. Okay, a little bit about me. I've been an entrepreneur since 1996. I've been in the publishing industry since 1998. I have uh, worked with some publishers and helped some publishers that have gone on to be New York best time sellers. I don't name drop, so don't ask. But um, I've been in this in industry, I have seen a lot. A lot has changed, a lot is still changing. So don't think once you learn this information that that's it. When you wanna write a book, a year from now. Don't think this information is going to be the same. Things are changing. So always do your research. Okay, um, I've been a published author since 2001. I was helping other people get published and I thought to myself, why am I just helping them? Why, you know, I, I have ideas now. I am a, a computer uh, science and information technology major, but I have loved English since I was in elementary school. So I've always been writing. So how I became a published author was after helping other people, I needed some money to go to college. Didn't have all the money. Did uh, student loans and grants, but I still needed money to go to college. So there's this website called fastweb.com. It has a questionnaire that you can put in, anything from, or were you born on an Indian reservation? Is your father in the military, whatever? And they'll go through their database and see what uh, scholarships or what funds are available to you. So I'm a writer, I came across a writing contest for Playboy. So I wrote a short story for Playboy, the top prize was $1,500 and I won it. So yes, needless to say, after I told my mother, she kind of talked about this only, she really didn't, but she wasn't too happy. My Playboy days are over. Okay. Um, I write in various genres. I do children's books. My granddaughter, as you guys saw, that's going in and out. We work on a children's series. I do self-help, I do uh, information uh, books. Um, and I do, right now, my, my brain is fixated on crime novels. My f earlier books are based on, I, I'm not a good romance person, but it, it, this with life issues, there is some romance in it. And somebody, I think it was this young man right here, asked about factors, fiction or nonfiction. Mm -hmm. The first two books I wrote were, uh, they were fiction based. But because I was ashamed at the time at what was going on, I fictionalized it. I put it in there, but I did fluff some stuff up. And it's okay to do that. If, if you're not ready to you know, do that, then do it the way that you want to do it. But they're, they're loosely based on my life, but they are fiction. So, um, and then like I said, right now I'm on a fix to do crime novels. And I've, I'm working on my third novel. I'm not sure how many of you guys, this is a good opportunity National Novel Writing Month. Has anyone heard of that? Start November first. So if you want to go ahead and get started, do as Shelby said and start writing. Do as uh, Letitia said and, and start you know thinking about ways you can advertise. It's 30 days from, from November first, November 30th, 
you were challenged to write a 50,000 page, 50,000 word manuscript. And I really uh, suggest you guys do that if you're looking to do that sometime soon. So it's nanorimo.org, and I should have put that up here. Um, my education, again, uh, my major is computer science and information technology. Uh, my, uh, and I got that from the University of Phoenix, Denver uh, Tech, and uh, UN, not UNTG, uh, GCCC. My family, I am married for the second time. And last time, I have two adult children, uh, 28 and 30. My, my husband has an adult child. We have together four grandchildren. And I was talking to this young lady right here, and I told her I was going to fall and not get back up. And she said, oh, you're young. And I'm like, uh, don't let the makeup and the wig fool you, okay? <laughs> um, my hobbies are, I start, I retired. Uh, I am working on custody of my grand, uh, granddaughter, so I retired because she is a handful. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when we were growing up and our parents were growing up, it didn't take that much to raise a kid. Mm -hmm. Our kids weren't that needy. We mm -hmm. left our kids what we call latchkey kids. Mm -hmm. We can't do that now. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter, she's very needy. We do swimming, we do karate, we do piano. We're all, I'm always going, so I, there was no way I could do my business full time mm -hmm. and, and, and keep up with her. Uh, but I do photography. Um, that's one of my, my love. And I, my love is still right. And right now we're building her brand, my granddaughter's brand. We have a YouTube channel. Check it out. Glamma and Little Bit. It's Glamma, G-L-A-M-M-A and Little Bit, L-I-L-B-I-T. So go subscribe to our channel and see what our life is like. So um, next next slide. Okay, questions. You guys already know what to ask at the end. Uh, but I suggest if you have anything that you want to ask, Again, I'm an old lady. I forget things. If I don't write it down, I wish that won't happen. So if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down um, and wait to the end of the section. Next slide. Okay, before I get started, okay, what was some one of the words I said at the very beginning of the uh, when I first got up here? Research. I was listening to little me. Teaching this research, research, research. Yeah. I have uh, retired, like I said, as a consultant, but I have had people come to me that want to write a book. Now, my business at the time was start to finish publishing, from the time to help you get writing to actually get that book on the shelves in the bookstores. But, um, no, oh, I'm sorry. She looked at me like she asked me a question. But one thing they come to me is, I want to write a book. Okay, how far have you gotten? What, what, what have you learned? Nothing. I just want to write a book. Uh -oh. Well, for all you know, I could take you for all your money. And that's another reason why you want to do all your research. People are out here to make money. Now, money is a good thing. I'm a businesswoman, so to make money is a good thing. But when I say make money, some people will cheat you, take all your money. I've, I've heard of horrible stories throughout the ages. That's why it's important and up to you to research what you are trying to do. You know, go on. People spend so much time on social media talking about dumb stuff. Yes. The internet is free right now. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you in 10 years, it ain't gonna be free. Mm -hmm. Go on there, use it for something constructive. Get yourself around like-minded individuals. Go to some author friends. We have this thing called Facebook. Now, I am friends with a lot of authors. I will name drop those. You know, Victoria Christopher Murray, Rashawn mm -hmm. K. Billingsley. They are very helpful when it comes mm -hmm. to helping you. Get with them. Uh, join one of the clubs that they're in, one of their book clubs. Mm -hmm. Go to one of their, their they throw uh, 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 book, not signings, but book events all the time. Go to one, talk to them, talk to them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They will give you information. Now, they're not going to give you all the information because, mm -hmm. again, this is a business. Yes. But go on, be, get their information. You know, use Facebook for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. <coughs> And again, like I said, it will save you some money because I uh, had a person that I just, I have retired, but I do select people that I wanna help. And this lady, I feel so sorry for her that I just really didn't charge her anything because now my fees are up there. But I didn't charge her anything because by the time she had came to me, she has been $13,000 in her stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had to help her fix that. That's why you research. Um, okay. How to mind your business, okay? Again, a disclaimer, I am not the IRS. I am not giving you tax advice. I'm just gonna give you some things that I had to deal with as far as the IRS is concerned. It's some things that I've done some research on and some things that I was actually told by the IRS when I started my business. It is up to you to figure out or find out what the tax laws are in your county, 
your city and your state, because they're not all the same in some places. Um, I, you have to decide, again, I was telling you guys earlier, if you will treat this as a hobby or if you will treat this as a business. Um, because if you make more than $400 in sales, so let's say you go to booking, you just love it, you told everybody about your book, your family, whatever, you start selling books, they told people, and you just start selling, and you get to that $400 mark. Uncle Sam wants his share. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at that point, it's no longer a hobby. Um, it's not 600 or 400 No, it's 400 mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't try that too new. <laughs> um, and then, of course, that makes you an entrepreneur. So when I go ahead and just go in full fledged, okay, mm -hmm. just like business, you can often, okay, you pay Uncle Sam his 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 uh, percentage, but you can offset a lot of things by being a business owner, including a writer. A lot of people, I had a client come to me and they said, "Well, I write from home. What am I going to write off?" You can write off a portion. I know I'll get in that later on, but a portion of your house, your supplies, your mileage, and a lot of things. Um, and your losses. So if you had some losses, you can write those off too, up to a certain amount again. Consult with your tax advisor or whoever. Next slide, please. I'm oh, sorry, can you go back to the other one? Is it, it's okay. I have some little checks down here. I don't know if they showed up on you guys. Is, uh, it's blank. Is it blank? I'm sorry. Um, change your mindset. Think like a business owner and entrepreneur. At this point, you are going to be an entrepreneur. Um, find out what dollar amount your state considers you an entrepreneur as a, in a business. Book sales, like I said, is, is four hundred dollars. The other business, I don't know. You have to consult with them. Next one. Okay, how to form your business? Again, it's your responsibility to find out the laws for your city, county, and state. Again, in some states, all three are the same. In states like North Carolina, it's not the same. Uh, before your book is even finished, you need to come up with a, biz a professional name for your business. Now. I hope I don't offend anybody in here. I'm on but when we have children, some of us really don't think about what we name our kids. And mm -hmm. that name they're going to take throughout their life. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your business. Think about your business. When you put that name out there and you get that business registered, that is you. When people hear, uh, I'm sorry, Letitia, I can't remember the name of, the, of your business, but the, go ahead. Destiny Child Destiny Foundation. Destiny Child Foundation. The first thing they're going to think of is Letitia. So make sure, you know, you don't want to, you know, maybe you do. Solid Rock down the street, by the way, publishing company. You know, you don't be careful what you do because that's your company and that's representing you. Okay, um, and then also decide whether you're going to be a sole proprietor, a limited liability corporation, or a corporation. In writing, in most cases, unless you want to become a large publisher and have a lot of offers done to you, a corporation won't even uh, apply to you. But some people do uh, open a limited liability, because what happens? Let's say you go into business and you decide, okay, I wrote a book, this person came to me, they want me to help them with their book. So I'm gonna help them with their book and charge them a fee, right? So what happens when they come back? They can come back and say, well, I don't like this, and they can sue you for it. So when you're sued, <coughs> when, if you lose, Normally, if you're a sole proprietor, they can take what you have, your personal. If you're married, they can take you and your husband's whatever, whatever the courts say. A limited liability says they can only take what's inside that business. So you want to protect yourself. A uh, sole proprietor is if it's just you, you don't plan on doing anything. Um, my writing is separate from my business, but I kind of combine them if that makes any sense. Um, you have to uh, follow a fictitious name for your business, uh, just DBA, doing business as, and I think when I did, I initially did mine in the state of San, in, uh, California, in San Diego, it was $25. And all I did was transfer, and I, and I think the transfer was $25 here in North Carolina. Uh, so I, since California and, and North Carolina, I've been in four different states, and it was $25 each, but still, you, that was a while ago. You may want to check and make sure they didn't raise the prices. Um, contact the IRS and obtain an EIN number. Um, that's going to be your business and social security number. Now, a lot of times people who are sole proprietors, ma'am, <laughs> a lot of people uh, will use their social security number as a sole proprietor. You can do this. A lot of people do this. But I would suggest doing it in, in, in uh, employee identification number. That will just give you more tax benefits. Also, if you go to go open lines of credit for your business, should you decide to expand that way, that will help you as well. Um, also, you have to apply for a seller's permit. 
If you're selling books at a book signing or if you're going to a book fair or wherever, you're selling books, you need a seller's permit. Now, a business license, again, check the county, state, and city where you live. I haven't lived in Guilford County. It's up until December of December 31st of 2015, they required you to have a business license. Found out you no longer required to have a business license unless you sell alcohol and there was another instance. So they don't require that in Guilford County. And I think our did some research and I think uh, Winston has adopted the same law, but you check that out for yourself. Um, deciding if you will pay your taxes annually or quarterly, and this is very important. If you're not the kind of person who can save up money, I would suggest paying your taxes quarterly. That way you don't have to worry about, okay, at the end of the year, how I'm going to, because at the end of the year is what? Christmas, and in my household is my anniversary, my husband's birthday is Christmas. So trying to come over the years with the taxes at the end of the year, it's not going to happen. So I pay my taxes uh, quarterly, but it's really up to you. Uh, open a business checking and savings account and credit cards. Do not commingle your funds. When I say that, do not put that with your personal money. <coughs> Make sure if you go out and buy a pen, don't whip out your personal credit card, whip out that business one. If you are paying someone for service, if you're paying someone to print your books, pay it from your business accounts. Maintain good business records. Now this is where I had a problem at first. <clears throat> Letitia is the organized one. I used to be organized, but somewhere along the way, everything just left me. So you have to keep uh, paper copies, keep computer copies, keep a backup because, you know, like she said, anything can happen. Your computer, I've had this happen, can just stop working. But have paper copies and, and a flash drive. But keep those those records. That way, at the end of the year, you won't be scrounging, you know, going around saying, okay, I don't know where this is, I don't know where that is. Keep your receipts all in one place. Keep, keep make a folder. Get one of those those expandable things that are plastic. You can flip it over and, and, and lock it. They have like 10 different slots in them. One, put the receipts for the year. Put, make sure your business license, thank you, sir. Your business license are there. Everything in your business is there. That way, at the end of the year, you have one place to go look for it. Or what you can do is what I do. I do keep a paper copy, but I scan everything onto the computer. You know, some receipts I don't keep, but I scan it onto the computer because there's so much paper in my house, it's ridiculous. And it's funny, I started a fire the other day, and that's a real story. But, um, <laughs> um, let's see. May, okay, know if you can, what you can and cannot write off. You can go to the IRS website. Sometimes it can be confusing. I would call them. You know, I wouldn't call them for a busy time of the year, but call them and say, look, I'm an author, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write books, and or I'm going to help people write books. What is? What can I write off on my taxes? Again, you can write off a portion of your house. They'll ask you the square footage of your house. What square footage are you using as your office? Your car use, what, what percentage of the time are you using it for anything that's related to your business? Uh, mileage, uh, they changed the mileage. I think I have it here later on. Uh, they changed the mileage. They, it's down from last year. It was 52, 54 cents last year. I think it's 52 cents now. Now, you can write supplies. If you rent something, like if I want to go out and rent an expensive camera and do a wedding photo shoot, I can write that off. You, anything that you use for your business, your phone, part of your phone can be used for. So just call them and ask them what you can write off and what you can't. Because I've seen people that come to me, I'm like, you know, you can't write that off. You know, some crazy stuff. So, uh, and uh, don't be crazy with your losses because people do have losses, things happen. But if you keep um, writing off your losses, like certain people in the Oval Office, uh, the IRS is gonna come looking for you eventually. They're going, okay, they can't have a, a, a loss all the time. Mm -hmm. Something is going on. Next slide, please. Okay. In addition to what you learned in the previous slide, there is more. Like I said, there's a lot of information, and I'm trying to go fast, but make sure you guys understand. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have been sitting here for a while, and it's 318. Um, decide if you would use independent contractors, something else that you can write off. And when I say independent contractors, everybody has a different method of how they publish their books how they get their books out to the masses. So if you're gonna hire an editor, they are considered an independent contractor. If you're gonna hire somebody to market your work, that's an independent contractor. If you're gonna uh, do a printer, anything, your, your book cover designer, your formatter, 
You have to decide if you're going to do that or do it yourself. Most of the stuff I do for myself. I've been in this business for a long time. I create my covers with Adobe. Sometimes I'll use stock footage. Sometimes I'll use, I'll hire an illustrator to do the work. Or as a photographer, I'll go out and find inspiration and, and do my own covers. But I do do it all myself. I do my formatting all myself. I do just about everything myself except to print my books. Um, now, uh, decide who you will use to print your book. Now, I use Ingram. Ingram is probably the number one uh, book distributor in the, in the world. I use Ingram and I use Amazon's Create Space. Amazon Create Space is cheaper than Ingram. Ingram, you're going to pay a little bit of money. But Ingram, you do want to pay for because they get you more distribution uh, than Amazon and uh, yeah, Amazon Create Space can. Now, you can print your books locally. I've never had an experience with your book. With, because you have to decide. It's really up to that person. At one time, I had all these books in my house, and I had nowhere to put them. I do want to have books on me for when I have book signings, or, you know, I always say keep books on you. If you go to the grocery store, you can talk about, you know, never get caught without having your books on you. But I didn't want all that inventory in my house. So Create Space will send it to whoever wants to order it straight from, from the, the, their warehouse to the person that wants the book. Uh, Ingram will do the same, but, but Create Space is a little bit faster in doing so. And again, like I said, Create Space, their fees are a lot cheaper, if at all, depending on what you're going to do. Um, decide what distribution channels you want to use. This is why it's important, I say, to use various different distribution channels. Again, Ingram is the most expensive. However, it is the most beneficial. As a self-published author, we have stigmas on us. So if somebody wants to return their book to a Barnes & Noble, Barnes & Noble won't accept it because we have a stigma as self-published authors. And back in the day, we were considered to be publishing uh, junk. You know, books riddled with errors and not something that you would see in the mainstream of books. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they'll just say, we, we won't even sell your books here because they're not returnable. They want to make sure they get their money. If they buy five of your books, they want to make sure they're going to sell five of your books because if they don't sell five of your books, they can't return them to you and get their money back. They got thrown away and that's lost to them. But it's getting a lot better. There are ways, and again, do your research, that you can actually go in and talk to someone at a Barnes & Noble or, or the bookstore and say, hey, look, this, this is the plan. You guys work out something and, and then go from there. But create space, again, if I have a book signing that's coming up, I can say, okay, I'm having a book signing on December the 10th. And I estimate I'm going to need about 100 books. I'll order 100 books and they're sent to me. Or if you come to me and say, you know what, I have a book club. I want to order 10 books. I ask you what your address is and create space will send it directly to you. So decide. And I, 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 I suggest doing multiple channels of distribution. You know, you want to, everybody's not where you are. You meet the people where they are. Um, create a marketing plan. This is very important because we can go online and we can say, oh, I got a book on Facebook. But if this is going to be a business, you got to really get serious about it, okay? Do I want to sell books? Because a lot of people write books just because they want to write a book. And that's how I started out. I just wanted to write a book because I had a message to get out there and I wanted people to hear about it. But as I started getting into the business, I decided I wanted to do, you know, make it a business. So marketing is also going to require a budget. I'm going to pay Facebook and social media is free. But I'm going to have to print these flyers and go to these libraries and ask them I post them. Flyers cost money. The ink costs money. The paper costs money. Uh, am I going to put it in a newspaper ad? That costs money. Am I going to do this? Am I going to go on to a radio show? Are they going to charge me? Make a marketing plan and a budget plan because you're going to have to spend money to make money. I'm sure we all heard that, um, that, that term. So when you're doing your budget, taking consideration, of course, you know, your supplies that you're going to need. The books that I'm giving away are advanced reader copies. You're going to have to give away some free books, unfortunately. I know it's hard to give away some free books, but I would be careful who I give them to. They would go to places like book clubs. Uh, send one to a book club and say, do you think you'd be interested in featuring this book for your, your book club being in January? And they can buy all, they can buy the books for the entire, you know, club. Or um, you can uh, 
budget for uh, business cards, bookmarks, you know, sometimes to go to some of these festivals we go to, you do have to pay an entry fee. Mm -hmm. So think of everything that's associated, make a plan. Okay, this year I know there's the Boston Books Festival, there's BEOA, which is a book uh, festival, Book Expo America. I want to go to this, so I know the fee is $2,500 for this, whatever, so I got a budget for this. So it's very important, because it will get expensive, but don't look at that part Look at the bigger picture of what you're doing. You're building a brand for yourself. Um, register and join with local and national associations. I happen to belong to the Murder and Mystery Association in Greensboro, you know, um, Writer's Digest. There's different associations, and that kind of gives you credibility if you decide that you want to, you know, help other people publish. They say, okay, well, she's registered with this people. It's, it has some little requirements, but still, they look at that like she knows what she's doing. Um, but still, you wanted to. Uh, do that because they will give you resources that you can use. They may give you up on, okay, here is this festival happening in August, and because you are a member, we can give you 25% off, something like that. So associate yourself with those. Um, research local and national conferences, festivals, workshops, I said all that stuff. Some of that costs money. Always look for the free stuff. I'm going to be the first to say, always look to the free stuff. But don't always think that it's gonna be free. You're gonna have to fork out some money to do certain things. That's why you pick and choose what you wanna do. Um, if you're not sure about the book festivals and so on, uh, side note, go on YouTube. Most of them have uh, videos of their prior you know, festivals so you can say, okay, do I want you to be a part of this? Because there are some of you like, no, I don't wanna do that. So just again, research. Um, set up signings and be creative. And when I say be creative, Charlene, has been great in contacting authors. She's, she's featured so many great authors here, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that we are in that number of people that get to come to the library. But I will say, all libraries are not made equal. No, no. I'm sorry, Greensboro Library is not good at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But don't just limit yourself to the library. You know, how many people have you seen a book signing at a wine, at a wine uh, uh, vineyard, mm -hmm. uh, wine tasting and book signing, whatever? Do it at a church, you know, gospel singing at, at, a, at a church. You know, do be creative in ways to sell your book. Don't just limit yourself to uh, a, a library or a book festival. Be creative. You know, do a. I'm getting divorced in two weeks party. <laughs> 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 uh, and collaborate. You know, these two back here, I love their relationship. They collaborate, they're always talking, they're inspiring. And, and Charlene, just collaborate. But again, it goes back to getting with like-minded people. You know, what can we do together? Can we have a joint book, book signing? Can we jointly write a book together? Or even a manual, or do something. Get with like-minded people and, and, and that'll help you as well. Um, again, I know I'm forgetting something because I can't see it. I'm a bit senile, like I said before, um, but that's why it's important to do your research. Um, down here, I've got research, and don't forget to purchase your ISBNs and LCCNs. Uh, refer to Boker and the Library of Congress. And I've got some resources in the back of the book if that didn't come down the bottom of your page. Next slide. Okay. What was one thing that I said in Guilford County and Forsyth County that is no longer required. She said it first. <laughs> okay, hard market business. You are the face of your business. Okay, I just had a client. We fought, we struggled, but she looks good now. <laughs> She would go out, she didn't fix herself up, and she was just like, you know, are you gonna buy the book or what? You know, I'm like, no, I'm not buying no book for you. They have to, even though it's good, you know. Present yourself in a way. You were trying to sell people something, and I'm like this. I walk into a store, if I walk into Macy's, Lord Taylor's, whatever, and I see the people look at me and walk away. I walk out the store. You don't want my money, my green money, I take it somewhere else. And that's the same thing about authors. If you don't present yourself as friendly when you're trying to sell something to somebody they, to convince them to give them your money, their money, you know, then, you know. So present yourself. You are the face of your business. Again, if we hear about Destiny's Child uh, Corporation Foundation, we know it's Letitia. Okay, so if Letitia was that kind of person and you came to me and said, yeah, I was thinking about buying uh, or doing some business with uh, her business. 
And I'd be like, no, you don't want to do that with Tisha because Tisha's got a bad attitude. She cheats you out of money, whatever. That stigma is on you. So make sure that you represent your business uh, properly. Get a domain name. I don't know how many people come to me and tell me they don't have a website. That is, that's one of the biggest pet peeves to me. Free. Well, it's free. It's easy. It's free, but you get a domain name. Mm -hmm. You people look 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 at it like this. I don't know how many people here smoke. I ain't never smoked in my life, but I know a pack of cigarettes is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If you take two, look, if you smoke four packs a day, go down to a two-day pack a day habit and take the other two and get your website. And when I say get your website, you can create your website by yourself. Yeah. But get a domain name. Um, but but let me just say this. Fake it till you make it, but don't keep faking it. Eventually you gotta make it. So if you can't afford a website right now, Wix does websites, uh, Blogger, WordPress. But what happens is when you do those for free, it says, man, what's your name? Sandra? Sonia. Sonia. Sonia.wordpress.com. Now, this is just me. I'm a business woman. Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna ask you, well, how long have you been in business? And you don't tell me, well, about 10 years. I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not doing business with you. And I'm thinking to myself, and I'm sorry, that's just the way it is in the industry. You've been in this business for 10 years and you don't have a website, a proper website. The main names are cheap. You can get them anywhere from $6 to $12 a year. Mm -hmm. Get one that says Sonya.com mm -hmm. and then go and build your website. You can connect those with WordPress or Blogger or Wix mm -hmm. and it goes to your, your name. Mm -hmm. Another thing that irritates me is the email address. Now, I know some people are going to be offended here. Stop using your Gmail address as your contact information. Right. Now, let me clear that up because some people are going to be like, what? Go ahead. Look, get an email address that says you got you already got Sonya.com, right? So get info at Sonya.com or Sonya at Sonya.com. Mm -hmm. When you get these email addresses, I know. Uh, Google is very convenient. Gmail is convenient. I mean, you can answer it from anywhere. Mm -hmm. What you can do is set up these email addresses to forward to your mm -hmm. Gmail account mm -hmm. and then forward back out to your regular domain to the person. So if you send, if I send you an email and it's going to come from my domain, it's going to go to your name domain and then back down to your Gmail, mm -hmm. and then you can respond to me. It's going to go back up to your regular mm -hmm. email, come back to me as your professional email address. Exactly. And I said that because there are a lot of people who will want to use Gmail. Mm -hmm. But look as professional as possible. Yeah. Okay. You got that domain name, and mm -hmm. most domain names come with a free email, most of them. Um, get a professional, uh, get a PO box. Now, we are relocating four years because we, my husband is retiring in four years. Uh, but we've had some problems. Uh, initially, when I started out, I had my regular address. People would just show up at my, at my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, but get this, I'm a publishing business, right? But I'm not a record producer. Right. But some people don't do their research and all they hear is at the time I was writing consulting and they know that I do publishing. Hey, I, I got this, these beats, I want you to hear these beats. First of all, the wrong industry. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta be very careful, especially in this day and age. <laughs> and this day and age, you cannot have these crazy people showing up to your house. Yeah, that's true. They, 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 they will harm you. So get a PO box. Yes. And there is a fee. That work that back in your budget. Decide to get. Now people will get a, a, a large one, a medium size, or a small size. Now this is just my personal opinion. First, get a PO box at one that's open 24 7. That way, if you're at work or you're doing something and you can't go until 10 o'clock at night to get your mail, you can go into the part where they have the PO boxes. Now, I wouldn't suggest getting a large PO box. You know, you'll get boxes and whatever else, but they'll just put a sleeve in the front of that. Or you, yeah, don't pay for that. Just get a small box for your mail, and they'll leave a thing in your in your key in your thing saying you have a package. So don't get a large one, but, but get a PO box. And what will happen is you'll start off using that PO box, but once you establish your account with the post office, what they will allow you to do is use their screen address and use your P.O. box as a suite number. So instead of saying P.O. box 13727, mine is 1535 Yanceyville Street, suite number 13727. Mm -hmm. So when I start dealing with people after the P.O. box, they think it's an actual fist fight. I actually had people shoot with the post office. <laughs> <laughs> One of my clients said, oh, what about your office? That's a P.O. box. I'm like, why did you call it before you come? You know what? <laughs> but anyway, um, Get professional business cards and marketing material. It's getting a lot better, but back in the day, 
How many of you have dealt with people that gave you a business card and it was printed off their uh, mm. inkjet printer? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, don't do that. There are so many things you can get to. Uh, exactly. So look at it this way. As much money as it costs you to get that, that flimsy paper, use your printer and that ink. This the print will make them for you for $9. And nine times out of 10, they have, right, exactly, promotion. They'll give you 50% off during Christmas or whatever. So get some professionally made, you know. Uh, and market material, bookmarks, you know, you can get a business card, uh, postcards. Uh, a lot of us have these tall posters that, that come in handy when you're doing a book signing. Mm -hmm. Just as part of your branding. Um, and do some research on that on what you want to do. But again, budget that into your into your budget. Um, get prof oh Lord Jesus. Get professional photographs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will scream every time and I will get all my clients. Can I have a co uh, a picture for the cover of the back cover of your book? Right. And there are dishes in the background. Oh, There's oh, a bed no. over here. Uh -uh. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh -huh. That's tacky. Get a professional picture. See, there's a difference between, between trying to get everything free and being cheap. Yes. Okay? No one is going to take you serious that way. I'm right. sorry. At least I won't. Mm -hmm. Go and pay, and don't go to mm -hmm. don't go to Oldie Mills or not because they got copyrights on their pictures. Mm -hmm. You guys know somebody that does photography and you mm -hmm. can barter you if you you know can you take this picture of me and i'll do this for you whatever you know or friends that will just do it for free just one hand one nice hand shot that's all you need okay if you don't have that friend you got an uh, iphone i'm not an I apple person at all i don't like them but i'm an android user but the apples or the androids have somebody get you in front of a white wall mm -hmm. you may put a plant here or something just for effect but nothing much nothing more else have them use the camera and take a shot of you. That is more professional than this junk in the back, you know. So yeah, get a professional picture. Um, get your business listed in directories. Call all the uh, publishing uh, in, uh, directories. Call the business uh, business directories and get your name in those. Uh, Better Business Bureau. You can't do that, but they're really expensive. They're almost a thousand dollars to get to get listed with them. So um, yeah. So. Um, just different directories. So this more marketing for you. Um, conduct workshops or be a featured speaker. Uh, now this can also be written out too. The mileage it takes to get there. If you have to use airfare to get there, hotel or anything, this can be written off. In a lot of cases, if you're going out of town, the people who are asking you to speak for them, they will pay your expenses up to a certain amount. Mm -hmm. But still, make sure you get that information um, and uh, write that off. Um, get on a radio or television station. I just retired my radio station. I had a radio station on Block Talk Radio, and I featured authors every single Friday. They were well-known authors, first-time authors, whatever. I did it for free. But then I know somebody who was doing it well, they were charging. Mm -hmm. And ironically, so the person that was charging was, was doing better than I was. So I just, I thought, you know what, it, I'm, it's, it, I'm staying in my lane. So I, I did it for like four years and I got out. But go to these people, some of them might charge you to be on their show. Now, if you want to pay, depending on who that person, if that person has an outreach and they have 500,000 listeners each week, I might want to pay them $100 to be on their show. Mm -hmm. But if you only reach 12, 13, 14 people, I'm not going to pay you $100 to be on the mm -hmm. show. So, and then there's some people who will just do it for free because they like doing it, which is what I did it for. Mm -hmm. So get on those. Um, but if they charge you, that's another write-off. Mm -hmm. um, magazines and newspapers. The News and Record has a section every Sunday. If you want to be in their paper, they give you the information. If you want to be in just a, a small portion or if you want to be a write-up feature. Um, I don't know if they, they charge or not. You have to do your research and find that out. Mm -hmm. um, place ads in magazines, I just said that. Utilize social media. Now, I won't say this enough, but why do I say utilize uh, social media as your first avenue? Well, that's where everybody goes now. I'm any. But there's another reason why you don't want to use it right now. It's free. It's free. Who said free? <laughs> Thank you. Because it is free. 
back when social media really became, became started to become popular, none of these companies were traded. I think Facebook was the first traded company. Mm -hmm. Now they're all becoming traded companies. You know what that means? Soon, mm -hmm. you're going to start, you're exactly, you're going to start paying a fee. Mm -hmm. They've already started doing it. LinkedIn has a free side now and a pay side. Mm -hmm. Facebook now has the ads and stuff, but they're going to move forward. Tw Twitter, they all have a free side and a pay side. And what's going to happen sooner or later, everything's going to be, you have to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. So why it's free, yeah. utilize it. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you don't have time to go on social media and, and, and post about your business. When I see you posting pictures of you up in a club going on like this and twerking and stuff, you got time. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being true. These are things. When you see you with my arthritis kicked in. <laughs> but these are the, the people that come to me and say, I don't have time to do this and that. Yes, you do. You have to make it a priority. Now, there is a, a, a software that I would suggest. I don't know if I'll put it back in the resources. Uh, I may have hootsuite.com, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E.com. They have a free version and they have a pay version. I strongly suggest using the pay version. Another thing you can write up on your taxes. They have a uh, link to it, your Facebook, your Instagram, your uh, Facebook page, your LinkedIn, your LinkedIn page, all these things that you can link to uh, social media. Do one post, just one time, five minutes, and it goes out to all of them. You have people like, I saw you on Facebook today. No, you didn't. You saw my Hootsuite post to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it's just so time saving. You don't have to go to these different venues to use it. And um, I'm a baby, a baby boomer. And I hear a lot of people say in my age group, I don't have time to go out and market these people on Facebook. I don't even go on Facebook. Honey, you better get on get on some kind of whatever. Learn, go look, GTCC will give you a class on how to use social media. Because that's where people are now. Yes, you can do do word of mouth and you can do whatever. But where it's at is going to be on the social media, on the internet, is where people are gonna find you. Um you should get the gap. I'm not a talker, a good talker. And I say that because Shelby said her daughter talks like a two headed sword. I do too. My husband always gets on me. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try to clean it up. But somebody will come to me and they'll be like, okay, so what do you think about this outfit for this book sign? Are you going to run in raggedy shoes? You know? And he said, you got to be careful. You got to be sensitive. So I'm not, I know what my lane is. My, my uh, specialty in communication is writing. I can write you the nicest email, but if I'm talking to you, I'm sorry. I, I just don't have it. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to tell you like it is, and I'm going to tell you short and to the point, because they don't have time for that. But get the gab. You can tell people about your book. Tell your family. Tell your family to tell uh, the other people. Now, I will say this. It's not even related, and it goes back to Shelby, I believe. Sorry. Um, be careful about telling your family about your dream, your books. Because when I first started out, I was told, oh, uh, you're not going to sell a book or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then when I started selling the books, mm -hmm. they finally bought the book and read the book and found out that some of that stuff might be about them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is another reason why I fictionalized it because one of my mm -hmm. aunts came to me and said, well, you do know if you put my name in, my, in your book, I'm going to need my cut. Don't worry. Oh. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> right. So, you know, but still, get the gap at work, tell your people at work. Tell your people that you're, you know, people who sell inspirational books like Shelva and and uh, Letitia. I use them because they they specifically write inspirational stuff. And I have a person that has written inspirational work, and I don't know where to market it. Well, you have you tried at your church? No. Mm -hmm. You go to a five thousand a five thousand uh, member church, and you don't know that. Excuse me. Oops. That should be your biggest customers right there. That is is. Right. The church is for the hurting and to heal. Right. These books are for people who were hurting and healed and showing up. Why are you not marketing and telling people at your church about this? You should be able to have a book sign at the church. Mm -hmm. you know, you look, they get you now. Well, are you a tie pay the member? Right. Yes, I am. And I want to have a book, style, a book uh, sign down the basement. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you should get the gab. I always have a book on you. Yes. Hey, you in, in a store. I have one of my purse. A man will look at me like, sir, do you read? Because I can't turn around and say, do you read this, this, and that. You've got to be careful with men. Do you like crime novels or whatever? Well, I, I do like a good crime mystery. Well, guess what? I wrote this book, you know. Well, what's that about? And I'll tell him about it. And he'll be like, well, you know, I don't have cash on me. 
Full house square. Full house square. Sir, that's okay. Daddy. Okay. Yes. Because again, I believe that the show or a gym that's said you have the square. I have both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to meet people where you are. I'm sorry, guys. I have phones in my mouth. I have braces and my mouth is dry. Oh. But you have to meet people where they are. Oh, because right. Some people will come if you've ever, ever been to a book signing. Or you may be guilty of this. You go over, you look at a person's book. Mm -hmm. You kind of want the book, but you're thinking, oh, that book is $15. I don't want to spend $15 on the book, but I really want the book. So you say, well, I might come back later. I don't have any, uh, I, I just have, uh, no, I don't have any cash on me. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is say, oh man, that's okay, that's I have a credit card. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, okay, you know you want this book, okay? Just go ahead and get the book. $15, come on. So, um, yeah. Um, and, and Letitia said that you do charge, they do charge you a, a little small transaction. I think it's like 2.4% mm -hmm. um, um, square on uh, PayPal, uh, uh, Intuit, um, has one as well. Write that off on your taxes. Mm -hmm. Keep, keep tra track of what you can write off. Uh, and then uh, again, keep materials on you all the time. YouTube is your friend when it comes to creativity. You can go put my, my name in YouTube now, all these videos are going to pop up. Because people are visual. Would you rather, if somebody sent you a description of a book, sometimes the synopsis can be six to ten pages. Would you rather read, sit there and read six to ten pages, or will you watch it, whether watch a three minute video of me telling you what my book is about? Because people have, their time is valuable. So people are very visual. So do use the power of YouTube. And if you want to research, go on and see what other people do. And that's a, you know, they'll help you. Um, websites can be expensive. Consider using WordPress, which are professional domain name, but we already got to that part. It's simple and it's easy to use. If you're like, okay, I don't know HTML, I have to know HTML, but people are getting away from HTML. They're doing CSS and all this. But with WordPress, they have templates where you can just drop and drag stuff into it. You don't have to know any coding at all. You can do that yourself, and that'll be an expense that you save. Next slide, please. I'm trying to get you out of here. Okay, how to keep Uncle Sam happy? Keep separate. This, this will get you in trouble. This got me in trouble my first year because I didn't know what, it, I'm fr frantically trying to figure out how do I do this, how do, what, was this, that, whatever. If you buy, sell, spend, whatever, out of that um, that business account, your records are there. So um, keep separate uh, accounts. Again, know what you can and can't write off. Decide if you're gonna uh, file your taxes fully or annually. Include all your business income. So if you say, if, if you do your taxes, and let's say you went to a book fair, and you made, you sold $1,500 in books, but you didn't report on your taxes. But you're online on Facebook and said, yeah, I just went to the Boston Book Fair and I sold $1,500 in books. Somebody's gonna see that. Somebody's gonna see it. So just be honest, just be honest, because if they do find out, you know, you're gonna pay penalties. It doesn't make any sense to pay penalties. We try to keep money in our pocket, not take it out. Um, Consider renting equipment if you cannot buy it. I know somebody, a, a man, uh, he's a man from Denmark, and I'll tell you, this man irritates me to no avail, but he pays me good. Um, he's an older white man, he's 75 years old, and he's always, you Americans, you Americans, you know. <laughs> you know what I want to say, but I don't, because you know I have to keep a persona about myself. Mm -hmm. But what he does is when I finish helping him do his books, he has his own printing press in his basement. So he rents it though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to do go that route, if you're going to be doing that many books, because he does a lot of books, so if you want to do that many books, don't don't buy it, rent it, because models change year after year after year. You're going to spend $1,500 or to $2,000 on a printer, and then in two years, it's going to be a new feature on it that you really need, but you just pay 200 whatever, just rent it for something like that, I would say rent. Me, I have my own camera with my own lenses, but when I'm doing a big shoot, I rent, those lenses can be up to like five, six, seven thousand dollars. Ooh, I rent that. Rent that for like, what, a hundred dollars for an hour? As opposed to paying that much money for, a, 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 I won't need them often. You know, I, every now and then I'll do it. So consider renting that information, renting that equipment, and you can write that off. Uh, consider bartering. I do a lot of bartering. My uh, granddaughter's a piano. And piano lessons are expensive. But someone that the person that does her her, her piano lessons uh, is also a musician. I do all this marketing work. 
and we just water back and forth. So I just do that. So find somebody to do something for that that can do something for you that you need that you can do for them. You guys can trace them. That way, there's no money out of either one of your pockets. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not good with numbers, consider hiring an accountant. Luckily, I'm, I, I'm good at English. Uh, I'm not good at math. That was not my, my thing. My husband, he's a whiz at math. So that's the accountant over there. Um, but if you're not good with it, consider hiring one. Um, try to keep as much money in your pocket as possible. But again, don't be cheap. You know, there are some things you're gonna come have to come out of pocket for. You know, it's good to research the companies. You might have company A over here that charges two hundred dollars to do a website. You might have. Now be careful with this though. A company a B over here that might do it for seventy-five dollars. Make sure you get some references and see what they've done just to make sure because sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. So just do your research that could save you a lot of money. Um, do not commingle your money accounts. I said that. Visit the IRS and SBA websites. Yes, the IRS and the SBA, which is a small business association, has valuable information on their websites. Um, if you earn uh, more than $1,000, consider paying uh, quarterly taxes because that can add up. Next slide. Okay, I'm sure I probably didn't answer a lot of questions and I'll take questions in a minute, but if you want to contact me, uh, my contact information is on one of those pages there. Now I'll tell you my best uh, form of, of, of communication is email. Mm -hmm. One thing I don't like is talking on the phone. I had a friend who would call me, girl such and so and so, and you hear her husband walk through the door. Uncle, well, don't you want to go and go get your husband dinner? Oh, girl, he can get it himself. No, 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 I'm not that person. I don't like talking on the phone. I'm not, you know, so, you know, call me. It'll be a quick phone call. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, email me and I can get more detail because then I won't go off and say something on the side. You want to cuss me out. We want to go back and forth. So, you know, I'll just better. I could. I know my weaknesses, you know, and I accept that. So uh, phone calls are not there, but I will take your phone calls. They will be short. You can always find me on social media. You can put my name in Google if you want to know all of them. Um, I have a street address, but I just put the PO box just because it was easier. Um, so all that information is how you can contact me next month. And then I put some, this is not all the resources, these are just some resources that I've given to my uh, clients recently. Even though I retired, I still service the clients that I was servicing before I retired because it wasn't fair to them to just stop, so I, I do service some. And these are some of the, you got some uh, places that will do marketing material for you, places that you can uh, uh, publish your book, uh, the Library of Congress, uh, you got to pay to get your stuff, your stuff copyrighted. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, write that off. One thing I did not mention here, I skipped right over it. ISBN numbers. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. tell you the truth about ISBN numbers. Yes. My very first book in 2001, I was so happy to finally get that book out. I was going to, uh, I had a friend in college who had his own publishing company. He said, well, let me publish this for you. I go, well, I'll be able to keep the rights and this and that. And he says, yeah. I said, well, okay. Then I went to Boker and I found that the, the ISBN numbers are uh, 250 for 10 and 125 for 1. And that was back in the day. They've raised them since then. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I don't have $125 or 250 to pay. So he goes, well, I'll just give you one of mine for free. And I was like, okay. Uh, flash forward, come to find out, it was it was under his publishing company. He had the rights to my, to my book. Mm -hmm. oh, so we yeah. kind of lost part. I moved from San Diego to Arizona. We kind of lost touch. So one day, you know, I, I was li listening to a, uh, who was it, um, some kind of business guru that says you should Google yourself on a regular basis just to mm -hmm. see what comes up. You know, you make sure nothing negative is about, about you right. and that people are seeing what you want them to see about you. And I Googled myself and that book came up. So I clicked on the website. It goes to his website. He's selling my books wow. off his website and I ain't got no royalties from it. Ooh. So what I did was I went back, I rewrote the book the same way it was with a little a few changes, not many changes. I changed the title and I bought my own ISBN number so that I could own it. So be careful. Do not go out and buy any mm -hmm. ISBN numbers from anybody else unless you want them over control over your work. Now, it is expensive, but this is where you can save money. Um, I forget what the, the price is now, because I, I bought a bulk of them back then, they're still good to use, but they've raised the price, but I'm gonna use the price that I use. 
250 for 10 ISBN numbers. And I'll tell you why I prefer you to do this than pay 125 for one. When you publish a book, you may have a hardcover, you may have a paperback, you may have an ebook. You need a different ISBN number. If, even though it's the same book, it's a different format. You need a different ISBN number. Now, places like CreateSpace and uh, Amazon, they will give you one and you still own the rights, but it's going to come up if they printed the book for you. And a lot of people want to stay away from Amazon. A lot of the, the industry wants to stay away from Amazon. Just because they feel like, okay, that's not a real person. You're not being published by Simon and Schuster or whatever. Again, we as self publishers do have this stigma on it, which is why we have to do it right mm -hmm. so they can take us seriously. That's right. So be careful when you get them. Don't be cheap and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy this one for now. You buy one now and decide you need two later. You pay what? One, 125 plus 225. That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Buy 10 at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you, you will thank you later. Mm -hmm. um, again, resources. Next slide. That's it. Keep the questions. Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, something about uh, reference to the first of ISBN that other someone needs that you want to go find out something about accessibility to the website? No, Google. Go to the Google search engine and type your full name and see what comes up about you. Oh, okay. You know, if you're an author, if you're a, 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 a established author or a business owner, whatever you, you know, whatever you may do. Tanya, go home and put your name in Google, and mm -hmm. I guarantee you everything that she posted on Facebook mm -hmm. or Twitter is going to come up. Mm -hmm. That's another thing about being the face of your business. Be careful what you put on social media. Just because your privacy is marked private and all that kind of stuff, it's not private. No, it's not private. You can go into a, uh, a website, I forget what it's called, I can put Shelva's information in, I can find out her address, her phone number, where she worked in her last five addresses, her related relatives, which can give me her social security number and all that kind of stuff. Right. Be careful what you put. That's why I don't put your home address. You get that P.O. box and use it. And that way, if they want to come and act crazy at a P.O. box, let them go ahead. They go to the government, they go straight to jail. You know, so mm -hmm. just be very careful. And what sites that you subscribe to, because you can go in mm -hmm. and find out if you own Exactly. Kind of exactly. Exactly. Your search. Your search. If you look, it's called target marketing. If you go look for something, when you go on Facebook, if you look on the right hand side, you gonna see like oh, just a website for those shoes. You know, they they're tracking you. So be careful. I have pulled up my name and found my book for sale online at places in India. And uh, now, although I have distribution in India, but some 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 crazy places like. You know, I don't know anything about this. So just be careful what you put online because it will be there. Any more questions? I have got some questions. I use both. I use both. It depends on I'm trying to get something out real quick. Create spaces for me. It's fast. I don't want to pay money up front. It's less hassle. If you use Ingram, um, I use Ingram Lightning Source, but they have a small one for, for, uh, for, uh, author for self published authors who are not going to print that many books in a year it's called even spark and i usually actually use all three of them but you have to pay fees you have to pay a setup fee if you turn your files in going back to the formatting if the formatting is wrong if your your uh cover doesn't re uh, uh, meet their specifications they charge you a fee to redo it again to re-upload the stuff to their website create space doesn't you can submit as many changes as you want to for free and all you pay create space is the shipping cost to ship your you know of course the cost of the book to ship your books and that's so i use all of them depending on what i'm doing so then you have your ISP so you give them your exactly, own Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you go set up the account, it'll ask you, when you post yeah. a book, uh, do you have your own ISB number or do you want us to provide you one? Right. So, yes. So once you have your ISB number, that means that it can be sold at Barnes and Nobles and all of that? Well, this is where you gotta be careful. You have to go in and talk to these people. Again, like I said, we have a stigma on us as self-published authors. Barnes and Noble, don't they don't like self-published authors even though especially like say here in North Carolina we've got a lot of self-published authors mm -hmm. there is a way and I call it the back door way but it, it, it's tedious but it can be done when you go in and talk to someone and sit down you know whatever their their criteria is maybe you have to have sold so many books already whatever but you can you know get it in there but you will need your own ISBN number they're not going to provide you with one and if your book doesn't have one 
they're not gonna sell it. And if your book has an ASIN, for some reason, Barnes and Noble has this battle going on on Amazon. They will not. They, they will. Yes, they will try not to. If you if you tell them your book was printed or published through Amazon, they won't. They won't take your book. Okay, because uh, okay, I was thinking he was publishing my poems. Most of my poems, well, a large majority of my poems are amatory in nature. I know there's a museum in New York that specializes in that stuff. So I will give get an ISB number and go in and talk to them and ask them to well, sell my Well, you got to publish the book. When you publish you have you have to use the ISB number when you publish the sure, book. Yeah. So when you publish that book and you get that book on the back. It already has an ISB a number on that. Okay. So the, the, once you get that to the corner of the museum, you've already got the ISB a number. Okay. Okay. Um, two more books to give away real quick, and then I'll ask you more questions. Go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead. Okay. Well, one of my questions. Okay. Uh, is there a minimum? What is the minimum as far as having the books published? What do you mean? Uh, is there a minimum? with like Amazon, is there a minimum with Ingram? Well, no, there's not. You can you can call them up or go on the website and say, I just want one book, and they'll send you one book. Uh, to whatever you want. Yeah, exactly, whatever you want. It wouldn't be wide. I wouldn't just call them and say, you know, send me one book. You know, you, they get you in, in shipping and handling. That's what they're going to get you. So get five, ten books, whatever, because they're going to get you in shipping and handling. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how Create Space was sold by Amazon. It is. It is. Yes. Yes. Oh, it yes. Okay. yes. But they have different uh, they have different publishing entities. So they have Kindle and they have a new one. I don't I didn't use them, but yeah, they have Create Space. Um, back back to let's see here. Um, how many ISBN numbers did I say recommend that you buy? Ten. <laughs> okay, and the last one. Let's see here. Okay, here's a good one. What is the, uh, what is the name of the brand of me and my granddaughter? Oh, Granny oh, and Little Bill. I know. Little Bill. Get it. 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 Well, I'll, I'll be, I'm sorry. Be careful doing. You can do it online too. But be careful who you do it to. Make sure you go to that county website because right. there are some other sell people out there that have companies who will do it for you, but they're gonna charge you a lot of money. So make sure to, to get a seller's permit or, or anything like that. It has to do with your business. So be careful where you get it from. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know if you guys have one more a copy of your handout. Look on mm -hmm. that. I have it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, another question. Copyright. Uh -huh. Copyright, I would strongly suggest you copyright your business. Um, yes. yes. It is, I think the last time I checked it was $35. But they've changed some rules. This is how it used to work. If you had four books, you could send all four of those books in in one envelope and your copyright would only be $35. So if you have more than one thing to copyright, don't send it in separately. Um, you have to send the copyright office two copies they can have it on file. Because they need something to look at. If somebody, if you file a claim for plagiarism or whatever, they need to have something on file they can look at. Um, a lot of people talk about this cheap man's copyright. Yeah. You can do it, it's, it's, it's not really effective. Honestly, no one plagiarizes your work. The regular copyright is really not effective either, but you want to do that from a professional standpoint. Yeah. Um, because the law states, that anything, anytime you envision, you, you, you release from your mind, this is my idea for my book. It is considered your creative work. So, but then again, it goes back to having it proved in court. So that's why I say, don't do, don't do the cheap man's copy. You might, you might want to try to do it and, and not tell anybody and scare somebody who might want to copy your work because I've seen lots of work copied. So mm -hmm. you may want to do that until you can to do it because a lot of times you can't do the copyright until after your books are published because they need two copies of the work. Or you can go ahead and do it and have to send them the two copies, you know, afterwards. But if you're going to do one more than one thing, make sure it's all in the same envelope so you're not charged separately for those items. Hmm. Do you know just create space? Handle the copyright for you. Nobody right? has to. You, no, 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 you have to do it. Nobody else does it for, for me. But okay, no, they don't. No, okay. you have to do it. Okay, we're gonna do a drawing for. Uh, oh, where to go? Can I have a? Uh, 
a view from the window. Quickly tell you guys about this uh, book so, so you guys can see what you're missing out on before I give you this rap while he's doing it. I have some, some uh, peculiar neighbors on all ends of me. I mean, I live in a diverse area. Uh, before across the street from me, there were two Asian families that had chickens going across the driveway. Wow. Look, I'm, I'm not from the South. I'm not used to that. And I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> then the house back over here, every week you see different a set of people going in. You never saw the same people coming in. Then across the street, this is what broke the camel straw, or whatever you want to say. I had this neighbor who was supposed to be a minister of a church. But he did all kind of crazy stuff, and you're like, okay, that's not a church I want to go to. But I'm going to tell you guys, yes, I'm nosy, I'm going to look and see what's going on, because I want to make sure ain't nobody running around here with no gun. I want to see what's going on. So my husband, I'll tell you, he goes, oh, you're looking in the window again, huh? So I'm going to tell you guys, I took the stuff that I saw from these people and wrote this book. And I'm going to tell you, there is a part in the book where the wife leaves the husband. I called it. My husband said, no, no, no. She came in with five church ladies. I call them church ladies. Five church ladies strong in an SUV. When a woman walks outside her house and puts some bleach and a, a broom and a suitcase in her car, she is leaving you. So I was trying to tell him that. And he's like, no, no, no. Sure enough, she left. Two days later, he was kind of neighbor. You kind of neighbor. You saw. You be like, okay, I'm gonna see because he gonna stop. Uh -oh. He was that kind of neighbor. <laughs> but this time, I wanted him to stop me because I wanted to see what's going on. <laughs> I tell you guys, kids, you guys, not the stuff that I wrote in this book. This book will start. I started writing it when they first moved in. The stuff I shared with my husband. He sat there and told me a lot of what was going on. And I was sitting there thinking, I was looking at my husband like, everything that I had wrote in a book, because you only see so much of me outside, yeah, right? That's and true. you guess the other stuff. Yes. Uh, yes. The stuff that I guessed was true, Ooh. and he's sitting there telling to me, I'm looking at my husband like, and the man looks at me, I said, this song is stuff you can put in a book. Ooh. Little does he know, is it in the book? I did this. So I ended the book a certain way. Oh, Tell me why. What was it, six months ago? I looked down the street, they don't move and read the house down. The same thing. So I went back and re edited the ending of my book because it's going to be a second one. Wow. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, 476. Is that the that is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 476? Yeah, we'll just think about it. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay, that's it for me. And that's the new one. That's the new one. I'm working on one now for uh, National Novel Writing Month. It's going to be a very touchy issue about the police and our youth. So, oh, wow. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This yes. has been so awesome, ladies. We cannot thank you. Same time next year, we want to read your books. 
Uh, yes. Okay. Miss Cheryl has uh, put you on a mission. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.